Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? Good, Brian. Not just another edition of Horse Center. It's the final Kentucky Derby edition of Horse Center. Yeah, this is the big one we've been building up to for a while. Now, finally, we make our top picks and suggested wagers here for the Kentucky Derby. We are going to focus on the Derby, folks. We're going to focus on the Oaks. That's it. Those two races, top picks, suggested wagers. Matt, let's jump right into the Derby. And I guess we start with the one, Matt, because... I certainly had Mo Donegal as one of my top contenders for this Kentucky Derby, but that one hole, he drew the dreaded one hole in years past. Of course, horses did not want the one post position. How worried are we about Mo Donegal coming from the one? Yeah, I don't know. And I think it's two years in a row that Pletcher has drawn the one hole. Uh, Brian, I, you know, I think Mo Donegal was going to drift to the back of the pack, regardless of what post position he broke through. He's slow out of the gate. That's his running style. Now he's going to drop back and he'll be saving ground. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that, Matt. I, I still do worry about traffic as they come on over towards him. But you, you could be right. He's going to drop back anyway. Uh, and he has won from the rail. He won from the rail in the uh, Wood Memorial last time. Of course, a much different scenario, a much smaller field there. But Mo Donald gets the one, Matt. Let's jump to the favorite here. And... I thought the morning line favorite, frankly, would be epicenter, the number three. But instead, it's 10. Zandon. Zandon, Chad Brown trained Zandon, winner of the Bluegrass, Matt, is coming out of the 10 hole. Good post, three to one morning line. Maybe Mike Battaglia, the morning lines maker, had a little bit of a Keeneland bias, Matt, because Zandon in the Derby and Nest in the Oaks, two horses I really didn't expect to be the morning line favorites, are both favorite here on his morning line. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have thought either one of those would be the favorite also, Brian. And that's an interesting way to look at it. I thought the morning line for the Derby was interesting also and that there were no horses above 30 to 1 because there certainly will be. Uh, uh, you know, I would have made Epicenter the favorite. Yeah, I think Epicenter deserves to be favorite, Matt. On the other hand, I think Zandon is my your horse to beat in here after that Bluegrass. I just think four races into his career, he's getting better and better. That Bluegrass looked like a race where I could see a Derby winner developing. He's improving with every race. And I liked him, frankly, last year when he was a tough luck second in the Remsen. So Zandon, 10 hole, 7 to 2. Flavian Pratt gets on him again after that Bluegrass. Now we got Epicenter down in the three hole, Matt. That's a little bit inside, too. And as we're looking at this field, I think there is a pretty good amount of speed, a pretty good amount of speed horses or horses that want to be near uh, on or near the lead. In fact, right to his outside is Summers Tomorrow, a horse we expect to show a lot of pace. Is the three hole a tough draw for Epicenter? And what do you think about him as a potential derby winner? Uh, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I don't get as crazy about the post position draw as a lot of people do. But yes, you know, summer is tomorrow is pro is uh, projected to be on the lead in in a number of experts uh, pace scenarios. So you know, uh, at least uh, uh, Epicenter and jockey Joel Rosario will will know where they have to sit with that speed right to his uh, outside. Yeah, that's true. But I, wa I wonder if they don't send him, if if a crush of horses, the four horse, the six horse, oh boy, there's more, Matt, the, the, the 19, the 17. If a lot of horses come over, maybe he gets shuffled back on the rail. So on the other hand, I don't know if Joel Rosario has the luxury of letting the four go and sitting back. Maybe it works out where he stalks from the rail and has a good trip, but that worries me just a little bit too. I, I do think he is a very likely horse to run a good race in here though, considering everything he's done. Now we get back to that morning line map. The third uh, third favorite on the morning line surprised me just a little bit too, considering Messier was clearly beaten in the Santa Anita for Derby by Taiba. But Messier at eight to one, there's a gap after the top two. The six horse, Messier is the third choice. Yeah, I think I'm a little surprised with that. I think, you know, between the two horses uh, that Tim Yakin has in the Derby with Messier and Taba, 
my feeling was that that Taba was maybe going to be a shorter price or that they were going to be pretty close together in price. Yeah, Messier is the one that the morning lines odds maker has chosen as the uh, as the preferred California horse. I tend to agree with that, Matt, given that Messier has a much better foundation. I thought the Santa Anita Derby kind of set up for Taiba. Taiba, I just have so many worries. He's only had one workout since the Santa Anita Derby. There were some soundness issues after his maiden win. He's only had two starts. They're great, but I worry about him in a 20-horse field. Matt Messier, I know you like Messier a little bit. Tell me what you like about Messier real quick. I do like Messier. Um, you know, quite frankly, I was impressed with Tim Yachtin. I was impressed with the kind of things that he said uh, at, at the Churchill Downs uh, in terms of preparing the horses. We've talked about Messier before. He's got speed. He's got tactical speed. Neither one of us is concerned about him getting the distance. I just see him as the kind of horse that has been successful in the Derby. I see him as being able to easily carve out 24 second quarter miles. And frankly, that's enough to win the Derby. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's, uh, that's true, Matt. Now, if he runs 24 quarter miles, though, I wonder where he's sitting early. Again, there, is, there are a lot of horses that want to be pretty close to the lead. So Messier uh, could be in traffic there as well. And um, the two, one thing I don't like about Messier, I certainly think he is a big contender, but two of his last three races, he was out finished to the wire. That worries me a little bit. And, of course, the Robert B. Lewis was where he became a top contender for the Kentucky Derby, where he won by 15 lengths. But there wasn't much in there. Let's look at a couple more top contenders. We already talked about Mo Donegal, 10 to 1, Matt. White Barrio is also 10 to 1 on the morning line. 15 hole, he can stalk. He wants to kind of sit third, fourth, fifth here. 15 hole seems like a pretty good post for a horse who's undefeated this year. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And, and <clears throat> to me, evaluating White Barrio, he's a bit of a wild card for me. Sure, if he runs his best race, if he runs some of those races that we saw him run at Gulfstream Park, uh, it's got to make him a tender, a contender. I, I am more concerned with him about the distance than I am about some of the others that we've mentioned, like Messier, like Zandon, like Modonigal. Yeah, and I... And I agree with you, Matt, and, and uh, I'll, I'll add the track. I, I wonder if Safi Joseph is as effective away from Gulfstream Park. And, of course, Wade Barrio has won all four of his starts at Gulfstream Park, and he lost his only start away from Gulfstream Park, which was last year at Churchill Downs. So something to think about. But, yeah, if he runs back to that Holy Bull or Florida Derby, Wade Barrio could be right there. Another horse who could be uh, right there, Matt, is Cyberknife right outside Wade Barrio. Uh, a little bit of a wild card for me because I think he's still got some greenness, but he looked good. The son of Gunrunner, trained by Brad Cox, winning the Arkansas Derby last time. Absolutely, and you can't, you, you just can't ignore Brad Cox in these big races, um, and, and you can't ignore Cyberknife being probably the top prospect uh, in the Derby for Brad Cox. It, it was a good win in the Arkansas Derby. I think it's a race that will only help him move forward. It was on a big stage with a big, the biggest crowd in front of the biggest crowd that he's ever faced. And it's not Derby of Derby quality, but you know, we'll see how composed he is. We'll see how he's doing mentally. I think he's a very talented horse and Brad Cox is dangerous. Yeah. Brad Cox is dangerous. I like what you said there at the end. He's got three in here, including Zozos and Tani Port. I don't think any of the three are uh, throwouts of the three. I'm with you. I, I like Cyberknife the best of the three. I do worry about his uh, 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 mental game, though, a little bit. It seems like he's better in the mornings. He's been very good in the mornings here since he's gotten back to Churchill Downs, where he ran uh, last year as well. So Cyberknife, one to watch. Tawny Port, a rallier, Zozo Speed, also for Brad Cox, out there 18-19. Interestingly, the three Cox horses all drew outside. Matt, anything to say about the other two Cox horses in the Derby? 
uh, not beyond the fact that they are cox horses and and it is not wise to uh eliminate horses from brad cox yeah tawny port could be a developing rallier uh, i didn't like that he got beat by tis the bomb pretty clearly turquoise park two starts back and i'm not sure what he beat in the lexington but he could be getting better zozo is obviously a talent a son of money's 10 furlongs won't be a question but he's another one matt that could be out there on or near the lead let's talk some other horses we haven't talked about simplification the number 13 I expected about 20 to 1 on the morning line. He might be even higher come race time, Matt. Uh, this is a horse we both kind of like as a long shot. Yep, and I agree. He's going to be at least 20 to 1. Uh, um, uh, Antonio Sano, this is his second starter in the Derby. He, he uh, um, you know, has done well training horses up to big races. We like simplifications, uh, tactical speed. I, I think he'll be in the, you know, in the second flight to make his run, and that's what I want to see from him. I, I think he's going to handle the distance. He is the kind, in my eyes, that will be passing tired horses down the stretch. And of course, I agree with you. As as uh, loyal viewers of Horse Center know, I think simplification can get the ten furlongs. I think he's going to like Churchill Downs. His son, not this time, of course, was a Churchill Downs horse, bred to get the distance. I think both of his losses this year, he had excuses, breaking badly, getting in a speed duel. I think that's why we get him as a long shot in here, because his wins in the Mucho Macho Man and the Fountain of Youth were very good, Matt. I think the forgotten horse on this whole list, Matt Schiffman, is the five. Number five is Smile Happy, 20 to 1 on the morning line. So uh after being favored over zandon last time in the bluegrass and running second to zandon this time zandon is three to one smile happy 20 to one matt that seems a little bit extreme considering smile happy had finished ahead of zandon two races ago in the risen star yeah you can look at it like that brian but you know it's a 20 horse field every horse can't get picked a lot of horses have got to float up in price but regardless of whether he's 15 to one or 20 to one or 25 to one, he's going to be the biggest price that he's been in his career. Frankly, Brian, I don't like him in here. Um, I've mentioned before he was washy before the bluegrass. He has been washy before his workouts at Churchill Downs in preparation for the Derby, where it has been very cool and pleasant that concerns me a great deal yeah yeah fair enough matt and uh you know he's looked better i think as the week has gone on at churchill downs so maybe he's getting acclimated one thing that you might want to remember or everybody should remember about smile happy is how good he was at churchill downs last year beating really good horses uh in that key race probably the best two-year-old race top to bottom of the year the kentucky jockey club and smile happy was much the best at churchill down so i still am considering smile happy especially in the range of 20 to 1 there matt all right we got so many other horses here to talk about we're going to go through them quick one horse that scares me i'll tell you what matt it, it's crown pride uh, japanese horses have been doing really well of late internationally they've been doing well on dirt crown pride looked good in winning the UAE Derby last time. And he, he looks like a horse who will be running at the end of this 10 furlong Kentucky Derby to me. Yeah, and, and talk about looking good. Uh, you know, all the workout reports and morning reports, uh, uh, people have been raving about the way crime, Crown Pride looks. It was a little bit wacky in, in, in some, of, uh, uh, some of the tasks in preparation. But he's been at Churchill Downs for quite a lot of time to get acclimated. Um, we'll see. We'll see indeed. Matt, I'm going to go through these horses real quick now, and I just want you to stop me when you have something to say. I think Happy Jack, the number two, seems like a filler horse in here, bred for the distance, but that's about it. Summer is tomorrow. We already talked about. Look for the uh, uh, a shipper from uh, Dubai to show speed. Number eight is Charge It. Maybe we should spend a minute with Charge It because he looks like a horse with potential. He's kind of a horse I, I want for the Belmont, though, Matt. 
the Belmont more than this Kentucky Derby. Yeah, a horse with potential, a son of Tappet, Brian. And that is a fairly typical scenario of uh, sons of Tappet. They need a little bit more time. Physically, they are impressive um, when they're younger, but usually on the mental side, you know, they, they need to improve with time. Charge, it's been a little erratic in, in the limited racing that he's done. And yeah, uh, uh, Tappets have done very well in the Belmont States. Yeah, he just looks like a Belmont horse to me too, Matt. He's big, he's powerful, but he, uh, I, th I think he needs, I think he needs room to run. And I, I don't know if he's going to get it in the 20 horse field in the Kentucky Derby with so little experience. Tis the Bomb is a horse some people like, Matt. Um, I think the question with him is, is he as good on dirt as other surfaces? But another question for me is, is he good enough regardless of whether he's as good on dirt as other surfaces? Right. Uh, um, and, and there are, you know, there are experts that are really gung-ho about Tis the Bomb. I don't know, Brian. You can't like everybody, and I certainly like a lot of horses a lot more than Tis the Bomb. I could say the same about Pioneer of Medina, the number 11, Matt. He's got some speed. He's got some distance breeding. He's in there for Todd Pletcher. Things to like for the long shot, but really no match for Epicenter in either race in New Orleans. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Number 14, Barber Road, kind of a rags to riches, $15,000 purchase, keeps rallying up into the second position or third position in all these preps he's run at. He's run at Churchill Downs. He's won at Churchill Downs. Maybe a long shot to using the exotics. Yeah, I think if you're playing trifectas and superfectors, you got to use them. Underneath for Barber Road. Uh, 17, we haven't talked about yet. Classic Causeway. I think he's speed. If you can draw a line through that Florida Derby, maybe you consider the son of Giants Causeway. But it was awfully poor as far as sticking around with horses like Simplification, White of Barrio, and Charge It last time. Yeah, the owners wanted to run in the Derby, so he's running in the Derby. Yeah, and he's got speed. And he's got speed, so that's part of the equation here. Last horse we haven't talked about is the last horse in. Ethereal Road, Matt, 30 to 1 on the morning line. D. Wayne Lucas gets a horse in. Hasn't gotten it done in graded stakes. He's only won once in his career. Those races at Keeneland, uh, they're not quite good enough for me to jump on the Ethereal Road bandwagon here. Yeah, that's for sure. D. Wayne Lucas didn't want to draw in from the also eligible list. So he got in uh, on points and drew the 20 hole. All right. That's a quick look at the Derby field. We're going fast here, folks. Fast and furious on Horse Center today. We're going to jump right into the Kentucky Oaks before we talk top picks and wagers. Matt, are you ready for the Oaks? Yeah. Shift gear go. here with me. Let's do it. All right. Here's the Oaks field. We've only got 14 to worry about here. Much, much smaller field, Matt. Uh, the first thing that strikes me is this morning line. I, I, I said perhaps Mr. Battaglia. Mike is a great guy and has been a uh, horse racing, uh, uh, an important figure in horse racing for as long as I can remember. But there was a Keeneless bias, Matt. Keeneland bias. Nest is five to two. Secret Oath is six to one. I just don't see the difference between those two. But I'll tell you what, if Secret Oath goes off anywhere near six to one, I'll be pretty happy. Yeah, I don't blame you, Brian, and 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 I don't know if it's a case of mem, you know, people's memories, uh, uh, long-term memories are not as good as they used to be, uh, because we got to remember back to those races at Oaklawn Park uh, when Secret Oath, Secret Oath burst onto the scene for the Kentucky Oaks that were just so so impressive. And then Lucas said, oh, I'm going to take my shot in the Arkansas Derby. Um, she ran third in there, and, and it, was a, it was a troubled third, didn't get out of the gate well, shuffled back, and then the jockey made a, a, an early middle move to rush into contention and uh, uh, ran into Cyberknife making that big move down the stretch. Um, uh, I got plenty of valid excuses for Secret Oath in there. And if Secret Oath gets back to 
those impressive victories that we saw at Oaklawn Park, she's going to be very tough. And as fourth choice, you got to be interested in that, Brian. Yeah, and I, I'll say I don't even think she needs to get back to those victories, Matt, because I think the Arkansas Derby, as you kind of pointed out, was a very good performance, taking on the males in that great one race there at Oakland Park. Secret Oath has rallied before. She's got a little bit more tactical speed than a, a true closer. She's rallied up the rail. She's overcome traffic before. She gets a new rider, a little bit more aggressive rider, and Louis Saez for the Kentucky Oaks. I think she has a big shot, Matt, but the – there's big four in here, and we'll start next with Nest, the morning line favorite, five to two. Certainly the daughter of Curlin for trainer Todd Pletcher is getting better by the start, as evidenced by her romp in the grade one Ashland last time at Keeneland. Yeah, four wins from five starts in a third place, uh, uh, so not far away from also being unbeaten in her career. It's Todd Pletcher, and, and he has had a lot of success in the Oaks uh, with four prior victories, including last year with Malathot, and, and maybe all of those things were played into the 5-2 to two morning line odds that make Nest the favorite, and, and her win in the Ashland at Keeneland was impressive. Yeah, I think one thing that Mike Battaglia did uh, get right with these morning lines, uh, tabbing Zandon and Nest as the two respective favorites, Matt, is these are the two horses more than anybody in both races that I'm thinking are just getting good at the right time. Certainly Nest is an impressive winner at Keeneland last, uh, last out, and she looks to be developing a really well-bred daughter of Curlin. Everybody's rooting for the uh, champ, Matt. Number seven, lucky number seven, was Echo Zulu landed. And people want to see this unbeaten champion continue to succeed. I think she's the kind of the people's choice in the Kentucky Oaks. Um, over the years, I've seen a lot of Phillies, especially Colts too, but maybe Phillies more than Colts even, where they just don't keep that top level from year to year and other horses catch up with them especially fast two-year-olds. Could we be seeing an example of that with Echo Zulu? I guess we could. And, you know, only um, more racing is going to tell us that. I don't know. In my mind, I would think that trainer Steve Asmussen would have wanted to have more than one prep before the Oaks with Echo Zulu. And for whatever reason, that didn't happen. Echo Zulu got a win in her only start this year in the fairground. Oaks, it was a narrow one. It was a dimi diminishing margin. But that doesn't mean, Brian, that Echo Zulu's going to move ahead from that race. No, last year there were no close finishes for Echo Zulu. And I think that's part of the reason that a lot of people have question marks about her heading into the Oaks. Yeah, and, and maybe a lack of respect on the morning line there. The unbeaten champion is four to one. I kind of agree. I, I, I feel like this is a tough spot for Echo Zulu. I, I, I feel like maybe uh, some of the other Phillies have caught up to her. There's not a ton in speed in here, and she is a, uh, a big speed horse, of course, but the horse just inside her, Ujiri, certainly has a lot of speed. The other one of the big four, Matt, is Kathleen O, seven to two, undefeated, coming from Florida, uh, she's won in the mud. That was her debut at Aqueduct. We could see a wet track on uh, on Kentucky Oak State. I don't know if a sloppy track helps her, though, Matt, as a real come from behind Philly. Yeah, and, you know, trainer Shug, Shug McGahee, he's one who, you know, a lot of trainers, when the, the tracks get uh, sloppy and muddy in the morning, they, you know, they don't work their horses uh but uh, Suge doesn't back away from that, and that's often why his horses do well on wet tracks. Uh, Kathleen O, you mentioned the maiden win in New York, and then three impressive victories at Gulfstream Park, but now she's got to go to Churchill Downs. She's got to go to Churchill Downs, and I think, I think she'll be behind Secret Oath and Nest early, two other horses that like to come from off the pace a little bit. And that worries me here as she really jumps up in class because I don't think Kathleen O has beaten the kind of fillies that she'll be facing in here. And that's why of the big four, I'm not as high as Kathleen O as some of the others, but certainly the daughter of Upstart has been very impressive in her four wins. 
Who else, Matt? Uh, I think Hidden Connection coming off that nice race in the Fairground Oaks where she almost caught Echo Zulu has to be considered, especially when you consider she was a big winner of the Pocahontas at Churchill Downs last year. Yeah, and you know, and and getting that close and gaining on Echo Zulu uh, certainly is a feather in her cap. I also want to talk about the eight, Venti Valentine. I've talked about her a little bit before. She's my top long shot here in the Kentucky Oaks, and I think anybody after the top four probably will be a long shot. Nostalgic uh, could seep down a little bit, but she's probably a long shot as well. But Venti Valentine, she's won her three starts impressively when she rallied. She gave Nest everything she wanted last fall in the Demoiselle, which was at nine furlongs. Last time she was on the lead, a place where I didn't think she wanted to be in the Gazelle, and she got run down by Nostalgic. I think this time she gets to sit off the pace just a little bit, and that could make her a dangerous horse, and the odds jumped up considerably after the loss in the Gazelle. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, outside of the big four, you know, they're going to take an awful lot of money. Everybody else is going to be a good price. Um, Venti Valentine has Tyler Gaffleone uh, in the saddle, and, and he is the man at Churchill Downs. I think I heard somebody say that he's won, like, the last six uh, uh, jockey titles at Churchill Downs. Yeah, certainly one of the best young riders in the country, and he knows that track at Churchill Downs. Good point, Matt. All right, there's uh, there's a lot of other good fillies in here, Matt. I'm not going to run down them all, but two horses I left off my tickets scare me. They do scare me. Nostalgic could be getting this good, and she's a threat. Daughter of Medagliadoro. And then Shahama. And if it does rain, Shahama has some mud breeding on both sides of her pedigree and and i still don't know how good this half sister of looking at lucky how good the daughter of monings is uh coming to america for her first start it's it's a tough spot for your first start in the country it sure is but you are going to the barn of todd pletcher but she's only been in the barn of pletcher for a month or so um absolutely a, a big wild card in this race yeah, she is a wild card and one that scares me. Watch out for the rain. It, it, right now, it looks like the uh, Oaks, I think, is in more danger of having an off track than the Derby. That's how it looks now. We'll wait and see. Hopefully, we'll get a fast track for both, though. But right now, Friday looks like we could have more afternoon rain than on Saturday's Kentucky Derby. We'll see, Matt. All right, so we talked Kentucky Derby. We talked Kentucky Oaks. First, I want your top pick in the Kentucky Derby. My top pick in the Kentucky Derby, and, and it may s surprise uh, a lot of horse center regulars, my top pick is Messier. And I mentioned earlier, um, the distance isn't going to matter. Good tactical speed. She's the kind that has done well on the Derby before, carving out steady, reasonably speedy fractions, and just being there at the end of the race. So Messi is my top pick, but not far behind in my eyes is Epicenter. Okay. My top pick, folks, is going to be Zandon. As I said, I think he's the one horse that's getting good. Chad Brown's going to win a Kentucky Derby. I'm convinced of that, and I think it very well could happen Saturday. That bluegrass was just so impressive to me. I still think Smile Happy is a really nice horse. That bluegrass was so impressive. I think Zandon's getting good at the right time. He'll be my top pick in the Kentucky Derby. Let's switch gears, Matt. Kentucky Oaks, top pick time. Give me one Philly. Top pick, Brian, is because the uh, price is going to be generous, and, and I liked what I saw from her at Oaklawn Park. Top pick is Secret Oath. All right. On this one, we agree, sir. The fourth choice on the morning line, I think six to one is a little crazy. We'll see. I like the rider change. Secret Oath is my narrow top pick in here. But I think Matt's right. If she can, uh, if she can bring the game that she was running all season at Oakland Park, I think she'll be tough to beat in this Kentucky Oaks in a very strong field. All right, Matt, those are our top picks. You're on Messier in the Derby. I'm on Zandon. We're both on Secret Oath in the Oaks. Let's get to some suggested wagers before we say goodbye to the folks. We'll start with you. Let's see if I can get your Oaks Derby daily. There it is, Matt. There it is, Brian. Oaks Derby Daily Double is a wager that I like. I think I hit it last year, uh, keying on Malathot. Uh, 
I don't know, Brian. I find it very hard to think that one of the big four in the Oaks that we've been talking about, Secret O, Nest, Echo Zulu or Kathleen O, it's hard for me to think that one of those is not going to win the race. I'm going to hook those four up with Messier and make $10 daily doubles for a total of 40. I don't care who wins each of those legs, Brian. When you are playing a daily double, that combines 14 horses and then 20 horses, you're going to get good payoffs. Oh, yeah. $10 daily double will pay off well for you. I'm surprised you're down to one horse there in the Kentucky Derby. But if Messier wins, it should pay off handsomely for you. So you took a stand there. Let's look at my bets. My tickets look a little different than Matt's. But Anyway, let's look at my top one. Focus on the top one, folks, because that's the Kentucky Oaks wager for me. I do really feel that a fear nest in here. If it's a wet track, she's done it on a wet track. So I will be using my top pick, Secret Oath, along with nest. And what I did was two trifecta part wheels. Each one will cost you $40 because I'm trying to hit a pretty big trifecta here, folks. $5 trifecta. What you see there is one four on top in both tickets. The one four, of course, being Secret Oath and Nest, one of them has to win for me, but then the other one has to run either second or third. So I will use four other fillies for second and third, along with the one that doesn't win, Secret Oath and Nest. And those four other fillies, of course, include Echo Zulu and Kathleen O, but they also include Hidden Connection and my top long shot, Venti Valentine. So give me Nest or Secret Oath on top, the other in second and third, one of four Phillies running in the other second and third spot, and I'll hit a pretty nice trifecta, sir. What do you think? I like the way you structured that, Brian. And, of course, if a $5 trifecta is too much for uh, any Horse Center fans, you can bet that in any you know de denomination down to 50 cents. Yeah, that's right. It, it, those two tickets cost $80 total. If you went 50 cents, that would be an $8 ticket, Matt. That's not bad at all. All right, let's look at your Kentucky Derby wagers here. Uh, this is your first ticket. You've got two similar to me. you got the 50 cent trifecta part wheel working. I do have the 50 cent because it's the Derby field, and uh, uh, I want to have a lot of horses in there. So I am doing a Trifecta part wheel, structured, uh, and I've got two of them, structured for my top four in first place in both of them. That's Epicenter, Messier, Zandon, and Cyberknife. Simplification is the key to it all, though, Brian. I need simplification at odds of 20 to 1 or more to finish second or third. So I'm using simplification on the bottom, underneath in the trifecta and then i am using 11 horses to fill out the trifecta i won't read them all they're right there they include the top four and then seven other horses and if things break well and i get the winner and i get simplification and i get one of the others that's going to be a nice trifecta and Brian just flipped to the second one. Everything the same, except instead of having simplification in second, I've got simplification in third. That's a lot of horses, 50 cents. It's only 20 bucks each. Yeah, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting pair of tickets there, Matt. Basically, folks, what Matt's saying is my long shot is going to be second or third. And, and there's a, uh, a, a real reward if he's right. Simplification. Like we're talking 20, 25 to one. If he's second or third, good chance Matt Schiffman hits a nice trifecta for the Kentucky Derby. All right, Matt, you're in with your suggested wagers for the Oaks and Derby. And my, I'm going to keep this simple in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, a lot of horses. And I, I decided just let's go simple with my top suggested wager here for Horse Center. I like Zandon best. He's the 10. Simplification is definitely my top long shot. He's the 13. So I have two exacta boxes. I suggested a $10 exacta box for each, which costs $60 and 120 total. But of course, you can, as Matt said, you can bet much less than that down to a dollar and make this one tenth the cost. 
Then I'm throwing in the horse to beat in the first exacto with my top two, and that's the three epicenter. And in the second, I look for another horse with value, and I think for me it's smile happy. When I saw 20 to 1 on the morning line, returning to a track that he ran so well as a two-year-old, I couldn't resist using smile happy. I, a little different than Matt, think that the pace will play a part in this year's derby, and I kind of like horses who can come from off the pace this time around. I, th I just think there's so many horses out there early. So hopefully Smile Happy can do some rallying in there and get in and, and really spice up my second of two exactas. All right, folks, that's it. That's our suggested wagers, our top picks for the Kentucky Derby and the Kentucky Oaks. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here on Horse Racing Nation, I urge you to do so now. Before we go, Matt, let's get a party shot from you, my friend. Hey, it's the biggest weekend of the year, uh, pretty much in America. The most prestigious races with the Oaks, with the Derby. We've been covering it. We've got you prepared. Uh, bet our wagers just as they are or use them as models and substitute in horses of your own. But most of all, Horse Center fans, we want to thank you for watching the show and wish you good luck. Yeah, thank you for watching, and good luck. If we don't win, we hope you win. Actually, we hope we all win. Let's let's all win here, Horse Center viewers and Horse Center hosts here on Horse Racing Nation. I want to thank our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, as well as Candace Curtis for the great race graphics she provides each week. Folks, we look forward to talking about what happened in the Derby and looking ahead, most importantly, to the Preakness in next week's show. We'll see you right here on Horse Center. See you then.